Photosynthesis is made up of two major parts, the light reactions, or the photo part, and the Calvin cycle, or the synthesis part. Light is only needed for the first half of photosynthesis, for those light reactions. In the light reactions, that solar energy that's being absorbed by the chloroplasts and the chlorophyll molecules need to be converted into chemical energy. And so in the light reactions, we bring in that energy. In the process, water is split and oxygen is oxidized. Some electrons are going to be taken away from oxygen. Those electrons are going to be passed to an electron carrier called NADP plus to produce NADPH. The two main products of the light reactions are ATP and NADPH, and those are needed to run the Calvin cycle, which is where we're actually going to build our sugar molecules. So in the Calvin cycle, we use CO2 uh, to synthesize a molecule called G3P, or glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And then that G3P can be converted into glucose or any other sugar form that the, the cell might need. So let's look at the light reactions. The light reactions occur in proteins embedded in the thylakoid membrane. The light reactions are a couple of uh, light harvesting, harvesting molecules um, that are surrounded, surrounding something called a reaction center. So we'll talk about how those work. Um, and the solar energy that is absorbed by the light harvesting complexes are eventual, is eventually used to um, activate an electron, which can be loaded into our NADPH electron carriers. The light reactions are made up of two photosystems. Those photosystems harvest light energy. They bring in light energy, and that light energy is used to excite an electron, which is ultimately going to be passed to NADP plus and reduce it to NADPH. In order for this to happen, we have two photosystems, photosystem two, which was named photosystem 2 because it was discovered after photosystem 1, uh, but is actually uh, the sort of first one in this series of reactions. So light enters at photosystem 1. It activates an electron that is taken from a water molecule and passed through an electron transport chain. Just like in cellular respiration, that electron transport chain is going to be used to produce a hydrogen ion gradient. So we're going to have some chemiosmosis occurring here. At the end of that electron transport chain, uh, light again activates an electron, and after being activated there in photosystem 1, it is transferred to NADPH, and then uh, that NADPH is going to go into the Calvin cycle. That hydrogen ion gradient that we created is again going to be used to produce ATP synthase. That ATP is needed for the Calvin cycle. So let's look at those photosystems in a little bit more detail because they are the actual uh, system that is absorbing all of that light energy. So here's a picture, a general picture of a photosystem. Um, this is actually more representative of photosystem two. Um, but the whole purpose of the photosystem is to absorb that photon of light energy. So the photosystem uh, contains several chlorophyll molecules. Those chlorophyll molecules are embedded in those uh, big, uh, in this diagram, purple proteins, proteins that are embedded in that thylakoid membrane. Um, and when the photon hits those chlorophyll molecules, an electron is excited and it's passed through a series of chlorophyll molecules and then ultimately is passed to a special specialized pair of chlorophyll molecules and is excited. So when that molecule is excited, it's passed to something called the primary electron acceptor. And that primary electron acceptor is the part of the molecule that's going to pass it on to the electron transport chain. 
in this process, water is actually uh, used uh, here at sort of in this region to donate uh, an electron. So this chlorophyll molecule is going to lose an electron and it has to be replenished. And so it's replenished by an electron from a water molecule. Um, and in the process, we produce our oxygen, which is one of the byproducts of photosynthesis. So here we have a little bit more of a detailed picture of what's going on in our photosystems. And we also have the addition of something called the linear electron flow. Linear electron flow is just a fancy word for the electron transport chain. So I know this picture is a bit more complicated, but I do like that it shows where our water molecule is needed. Um, if we look here, this is photosystem two. The other one is photosystem one. Um, they are also called um, P680 and P700. That is, relates to um, the nanometer of light that it most efficiently absorbs. Um, <clears throat> but we see here light hitting our chlorophyll molecules, our photon, uh, activating those chlorophyll molecules. Here we have our water molecule releasing electrons to our chlorophyll molecules. And so the, that electron can be excited, passed to the primary electron acceptor. Now that primary electron acceptor has to be extremely electronegative because it is ultimately pulling electrons away from water. And then, just like the electron transport chain in cellular respiration, that electron is going to be passed through a series of molecules and complexes that are each a little bit more electronegative than the last. And again, as the molecule, I'm sorry, that electron is passed through that electron transport chain, we're going to produce a hydrogen ion gradient. So just keep that in mind for a minute. At the end of that linear electron flow, an electron is again passed to uh, some chlorophyll A molecules in photosystem 1. Light energy is used to activate that electron where it's passed to another primary acceptor. After that primary acceptor, it is finally loaded onto NADPH. So just like in cellular respiration, we are adding our electrons uh, to our electron carriers because we need to move them somewhere and we need to move the energy that contains them, that's contained in them. Ultimately, those electrons from that NADPH are going to be used to build the bonds in a glucose molecule, or a G3P. So those, that energy that's contained in those electrons that was activated by solar energy is going to be converted into the bonds of the G3P molecule via those electron carriers. So I want you to think about this statement. The electron transport chain connecting the photosystem generates a blank that can be used to make blank. So think about what the electron transport chain did in cellular respiration. It's doing the same thing here. Remember, the process of oxidative phosphorylation is where we are actually producing ATP in cellular respiration. But a very similar process occurs in photosynthesis. So the electron transport chain connecting the photosystems is actually going to generate a hydrogen ion gradient. And just like in cellular respiration, that gradient is going to be used to make ATP. So that linear electron flow, that electron transport chain, is coupled with chemiosmosis. So here we see chemiosmosis again. Again, that is just energy that's stored in the form of a hydrogen ion gradient. And that hydrogen ion gradient is going to be used to drive the synthesis of ATP. The light reactions produce ATP. And the reason that ATP is needed is because the Calvin cycle is an anabolic process. It's a building process where we're going to go from low energy carbon dioxide to high energy 
G3P. And so we need ATP to power that building. Just like in oxidative phosphorylation, ATP is present. And that is the enzyme that is going to use that hydrogen ion gradient in order to produce ATP. We have a slightly different process, uh, well, slightly different name for the process. In, ele in linear electron flow, we don't call it oxidative phosphorylation. We call it photophosphorylation because ultimately it is light energy that is powering the phosphorylation of ATP. If we look at this image on the bottom here, we see a comparison between the mitochondrion and the chloroplast. Even though we call the process a different name, um, it's still essentially the same process. We have an electron transport chain embedded in a membrane. In this case, it's the thylakoid membrane instead of the mitochondria inner, I'm sorry, <clears throat> the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The hydrogen ions are pumped through the electron transport chain and then allowed to flow back through via diffusion across the membrane through ATP synthase. That electrochemical gradient is what is used to turn the ATP synthase and then power the ATP production. So here's sort of a uh, overview image of what's going on in the light reactions. On the top there, we have our light entering photosystem one, our electrons from water entering photosystem one, and then our electrons being passed along that linear electron flow transport chain. As that happens, hydrogen ions are pumped across, and then they move down to um, what is drawn as the bottom of this uh, membrane here through the ATP synthase to produce ATP. As those electrons travel through the electron transport chain, they are passed to photosystem one, where they are ultimately passed through an enzyme called NADP plus reductase which does exactly what its name says. It reduces NADP to NADPH. So now we have our NADPH electron carriers and our ATP that are going to power the Calvin cycle. So the goal of the light reactions is to bring in light energy and use it to make ATP and those electron carriers.